Petra, undoubtedly one of the most impressive stone-cut ancient cities on Earth. Carved into the meandering rising rock faces, within a red stone gorge in Jordan, with the mastery of the original stonecutter's abilities on full display, unfinished, possibly perceived as insignificant areas of this site. Invaluable to our investigations into their construction, as these areas still possess the initial stages of the stone cutting procedure, patterning we have used to identify the work of the creators of these sites by means of the tool marks they left behind, now found and identified by us at a number of different ruins all over the world. However, Petra is a place that although used as the backing for many popular titles, the true size of the entire city, and indeed many of the lesser studied rarely mentioned corners of the site, and the sculptures found therein, are just as impressive. Some of these areas displaying a tremendously greater age, proof of a far earlier group of stone-cut dwellings, created far earlier in history which are found intermingled with the more recognizable structures. For not only is any logical explanation as to how such structures were originally constructed, absent from the mainstream tale of events, but additionally, a near-identical conundrum confronts historians regarding the temples in India, one such being that of Kailash. These temples, instead of having been cut into rising rock faces as found in Jordan's Petra, were instead carved downwards out of the bedrock, which was no less of an incredible feat, if anything, an even more impressive accomplishment. Additionally, why structures on completely different continents, both cut out of solid rocks, would share the same tool markings, which like a fingerprint, are now allowing said sites to finally be linked together, providing compelling evidence to support the posit of a past now lost once highly advanced global civilization, which existed far before academically documented history. Additionally, just like that of Longyu Cave in China, yet another ancient site cut straight out of solid stone, the hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of tons of waste mortar has never been found. To create such an enormous structure is one thing, but to actually successfully transport away all of the quarried stone is a feat we feel would have taken any distant culture permitted to be studied by mainstream archaeology many years to have been accomplished. So long, in fact, that it is implausible to suggest this happened. Evidence of this would litter the sites, and many individuals would have been discovered by now, buried there, each displaying telltale injuries from what would have been an unimaginably difficult task to have accomplished. Bazda Caves in Turkey is yet another ancient site quarried from the bedrocks of Earth, which too shares the same tool marks, left by the same technology that clearly cut all of these sites, thus strongly supporting the premise that all these sites were not only cut by the same civilization, but they utilized lost yet once highly efficient technologies in the original building of these relics. Petra is a site that is thankfully remarkably sheltered and thus remarkably well-preserved, yet due to the areas clearly being of a far greater age, supports the further premise of there having been multiple past civilizations which once dwelled here. Civilization which have been and gone on our planet, which are unfortunately often dismissed or ignored, even hidden with great effort. Yet thankfully, the proof, no matter how some try to keep hidden, remains for all who can recognize them to see, proofs which we find highly compelling. Over the last few years, more and more modern technologies have been utilized by individuals with access to them in an effort to not only expose the truth regarding the real history of man, but to discover the actual original size of these now lost civilization's ancient ruins. Many sites have been laid to waste, not only by future settlements and tomb robbers, but by Mother Nature herself, many of these most impressive sites having endured eons of erosion after being mysteriously abandoned, exposed to the elements. Yet there exists a number of these sites which have been somewhat protected from these forces. Although vegetation can have a catastrophic effect, 
uprooting the megalithic foundations of these sites. Yet the actual footprint of these structures, and indeed the overall size of these once lost settlements, can still be seen through modern penetrative radar, with one of the most incredible found in the past few years. Undoubtedly, the mega metropolis hidden beneath the dense forests of Guatemala. Although some clearings dotted within this landscape have been spared, somehow avoiding the suffocation of trees, it has been discovered that these sites, long argued as separate sites of habitation, were, in reality, once part of the same gigantic city, one of unimaginable size and complexity that was unquestionably home to not mere thousands, but was in fact a settlement that was home to more than 10 million. Yet although this reality is a compelling, supportive fact regarding our own beliefs, in regards to a far greater, now hidden, and widely ignored history of mankind, there are still features of this ancient site that is still attempted to be ignored, overlooked, and hopefully concealed from the majority of the world's population, ultimately avoiding them questioning the true reality of what they have been taught, and the possible truth regarding our history, which these sites could provide to all those who gaze upon them. Although these particular megalithic blocks somehow stood on their heads, have been explored and exposed for nearly a hundred years, with many photographic expeditions having been made to these sites, it has now been proven that these megalithic blocks were not merely signposts made of stones in situ, but were clearly stones cut and once transported to their current location, and were actually strategically placed within one huge mega-settlement. This fact is attempted to be stifled, avoiding individuals questioning how if indeed they were transported and cut by our more recent ancestors, the Mayans, how they actually accomplished this feat, when they clearly required now lost techniques and technologies, as although they were far more primitive, technologically speaking to the modern man, with us only accomplishing such abilities within the last century, all thanks to modern technology. This is clearly an identifying feature which exposes the true capabilities of the builders of this enormous city, and the fact that although academics would like to argue that it was merely a Mayan settlement, it possesses, like so many other astonishing sights on Earth, as yet unexplained enigmas, which not only fly in the face of this explanation for their origins, but actually suggest that they were merely re-inhabited by the Mayans allowing archaeologists to point the finger at such a group due to their archaeological fingerprint having been left at the location, sites which were in fact built by a now lost yet once highly capable ancient civilization that due to their immense age has now been lost to history, like so many of their ancient settlements, lost to the sands of time, with only the foundation of which now survive, thankfully exposed by modern technologies. Who were these ancient people? How or indeed why did they move and cut such enormous, enigmatic ancient megaliths within this enormous, now lost city? It is a place which we find highly compelling. We recently covered the astonishing ancient megaliths known as the Colossus of Memnon, a pair of 1,000-plus ton statues that have not only survived unknown eons into the modern day, but still possessed some of their most intriguing features all the way into known recorded history, most notably during the Roman Empire, when they were often regarded as having been able to sing at first light every day. We also touched upon the little-known conclusion, made by a number of individuals and even funded academics referring to many other enigmatic artifacts that have been found across Giza, and even Egypt as a whole, as having been once lathe-worked. These often stone artifacts are so precise in their construction, with pottery even displaying a level of delicacy from their makers, that the only explanation for their existence could be attributed to having once been machine-worked, with the ancient Egyptians, claimed as their so-called makers, having once possessed enormous lathes something modern man has only understood and utilized for a very brief time span, 
with a number of multi-ton sarcophagi also sharing this explanation for their creation. As to explain them as having once been made merely by hand is not only illogical, but almost an inconceivable tale to attach to such precisely made stonework. Created with not only astonishing symmetry, but also an astoundingly delicate and precise attention to detail, which modern man has only attained using modern lathes. Yet any explanation as to how these lathes were powered, how these individuals worked such enormous stones, or indeed what tools they utilized to cut such hard stones, remains largely unexplained. It is as if modern academia had been cornered by these past capabilities of this now lost civilization, having to admit that such precision can only be accomplished with seemingly advanced technology, yet, conveniently, leaving any practical explanation of what these technologies looked like, where they went, or how they were made or used, absent from their explanations of these incredible artifacts. Yet, interestingly, ancient Egypt is not the only place which contains these remarkable relics. Baba Lovo, also known as Baba Lovka Palace, is a historical building located near the city of St. Petersburg, Russia. This palace was built towards the end of the 18th century, during the reign of Catherine II of Russia. And one of the most astonishing relics found within this building is the so-called bathtub, which is claimed to have been made for the Tsar Alexander I. This explanation of origin is regardless of its incredible size, symmetry, and indeed precision, in which it was once cut with precision that just like the enigmatic artifacts that can be found within Egypt, should only have a logical explanation of creation, which included that of a lost technology, or more specifically, an enormous lathe and heavy-duty yet precision-cutting instruments. Yet curiously, this explanation is absent from mainstream academia's explanation as to the origins of this enormous multi-ton stone dish. Nero's bathtub is yet another smoking gun of this now lost technology and indeed lost civilization. And although the vaults beneath where it lay within the Vatican measures an incredible 25 kilometers in length, packed full of hidden writings, artifacts, and historical controversies, this so-called bathtub is housed in full public view upon the floors of the Catholic palace above. These hidden vaults spared its presence, as if when first displayed, those in possession of it did not recognize the past accomplishment that this so-called bathtub once was. Not only the unusual shape of this other enormous dish for a bathtub, but the technology and techniques of stonework that would have once had to have been utilized to create it. They clearly believe that it was indeed created by Nero himself and not a past relic of a now lost civilization, with all similar relics found within ancient Egypt exposed as ancient machine stones. The question is, who made these ancient relics? How did they make them? And if made by the claimed builders, why is this technology now lost? They are undoubtedly highly compelling. One of the most enigmatic, mysterious, and least understood ancient structures to be found anywhere on Earth. Although many academic institutions and funded individuals throughout the years have maintained that these structures were tomb sites built for ancient Egypt's greatest leaders, the severe lack of evidence supporting such claims, along with the lack of any hieroglyphic recording of the enormous undertaking that these structures would have been, contradicts this explanation. Particularly Cheops, the largest of the three great pyramids, and the only one constructed to in fact have eight sides. The only one with tunnels, the only one with shafts, most notably the shaft which led to Gattenbrink's door, long thought to have been air shaft, due to its steep incline and minuscule scale. And although it is the only one to possess such features, they were installed perfectly. These tiny shafts were not only perfectly aligned throughout the structure's internal stonework, built with unimaginable skill and accuracy, but these were somehow hermetically sealed during the pyramid's original construction. This would have been required to avoid them becoming blocked with dust, with the exterior shape of the pyramids built with such astounding precision 
the subtle indent creating the eight sides is so slight, it is only visibly detectable under certain light angles, often requiring modern technology to actually measure the perfection these ancient feats were. As mentioned, Gattenbrink's door leading from the king's chamber was for many years assumed to be an air tunnel. However, after attempting to inspect the shaft with an intention to consider utilizing the structure's own design to aid in fresh air circulation, it was realized that this shaft led instead to a blocking door, the doorway to an undiscovered chamber within the bowels of this most mysterious of ancient remnants. However, after several years of apparent reluctance to explore this hidden chamber, Along with the mammoth challenge Gattenbrink encountered attempting to develop a robot capable of reaching the blocking door, capable of traversing the obstacles within the shaft to eventually penetrate this inner sanctum. As the discovery came to its ultimate culmination of actually seeing what was hidden behind this door, within this hidden chamber, a shaft deliberately designed to be near impossible to discover without modern technology, thus clearly a room of great importance. The media was blocked, a blackout descended upon the Giza Plateau, and the investigations remained guarded for a considerable amount of time. When it was eventually opened up to the world, the supposed tomb found in situ within the chamber was conveniently empty, without any distinguishing evidence to suggest the chamber's past function Many people would be forgiven to suspect a conspiracy ensued, one in an attempt to conceal whatever was found in the supposed tomb of Osiris. What are the Egyptian authorities and even other influential countries' governments concealing regarding this mysterious chamber? Thankfully, it seems that this was not the last chamber to ever be realized. Two more chambers have now been discovered to still be buried, hidden within this great pyramid one which is located above the Grand Gallery is said to be of a significant size. The question is, what could be hidden in these two remaining rooms? Will advancements in penetrative radar allow its true contents to be revealed to the world before the Egyptian government have the chance to hide its contents? These are astonishing ancient structures, undoubtedly one of the most incredible wonders on Earth. As such, they are highly compelling. It is now a well-known, heavily studied fact that the modern-day bird was once a very different-looking animal, evolution in the form of a radical transformational adaptation, forced upon them by gradual changes in the Earth's environment, from which they whence came, that being the dinosaur. We now know this to be fact, thanks to modern technology. Our capability to now scan these fossils some found remarkably well-preserved, still fortunately containing many things, which have allowed us to discover that dinosaurs had bird brains, or more accurately, birds have dinosaur brains. With current investigations even shining light upon the reality that many of these gigantic animals, including the T-Rex, once had manes made of feathers. This drastic change from the dinosaur resulting in the vast array of creatures we see today, from the ostrich to the albatross, even to the commonly domesticated budgerigar. Yet they all share one common trait, a significant reduction in their size. Even animals which survived unchanged, such as the crocodile, still shrank considerably. This shrinking of said species, having been demanded of them by environmental changes. Evolutionary adaptation as we have covered in the past, is, in the channel's opinion, in its true sense, an adaptation of specific sets of vertebrate types, the true definition of species, not as Darwinian theory posits, of leaps between such. Thus, evolution witnessed within the animal kingdom is not indicative of a shared single ancestry, but inseparable branching from specific vertebrae or phyla groups never proven to have leaped from one to another. As such, modern-day birds could in fact be seen as the product of de-evolutionary adaptation, possibly derived from cataclysm, which deprived them of the resources needed to remain at such gigantic sizes. 
The reason for this digression is the channel's postulation of this same process, having once possibly occurred to Homo sapiens also. Could this explain why some of the oldest ruins are also some of the most advanced? with many remaining beyond the reach of modern man's ability to understand them. Is it possible that man once had a much higher intellect than us today, due to a far greater sized cranium? Simply put, were we once giants, just as modern-day birds were once dinosaurs? Legends and accounts of ancient giants can be found all over the world, also featuring in many ancient religious teachings. Additionally, many of the still unexplained sites of Earth regularly feature doorways many feet, sometimes even meters above that which is required by and for humans of our modern scale. The Terracotta Army, for example, is believed by many independent researchers, including Mystery History, to have been made by a lost civilization, and their average height, intriguingly, is much taller than modern man. Many accounts exist of giants, which share similar descriptive characteristics. Red hair, double-rowed teeth, elongated skulls, etc. With many accounts of red-headed giant remains actually discovered and excavated all over the world, yet often all that survives of these reported events is a small news article, regularly noting Smithsonian involvement in said recoveries, yet seemingly and conveniently always slipping away from the public domain. Lovelock Cave being another example, locals tell of it once being the home of a group of red-headed giants, which was eventually blocked and the giants burnt alive, a giant handprint still visible on a rock in the cave, presumably made by one of these individuals during their unpleasant demise. Yet what has to be the most compelling piece of evidence, fortunately still in view to suggest giants did indeed once exist, are footprints found all over the globe, once laid down upon sediment, now fossilized into solid stone. These footprints range in size up to a few meters in length, indicating that humans, at some point in the distant past, may have been even larger than many dinosaur species. We find the evidence to support the hypothesis of giant ancient humans highly compelling. The Red Planet Although many people assume it to be the closest planet to our own, it is in fact Venus which comes closer to the Earth during its orbit around our star. Mercury is the closest planet not only to Earth, but to every other planet in the solar system at one time or another. Yet these giants barren landscapes incapable of supporting life. This reality is partly why Mars is so often the focus of man's attention in regard to our solar system's planetary bodies. With a partial atmosphere, and thanks to the Mars rovers, proven to possess water, it is a far less violent planet, not scorched like Mercury or filled with toxins like Venus. As such, for many years now, as the human population has exploded and modern technology has made self-sustaining, isolated life-supporting systems a reality, the search for suitable places for future colonization of the solar system has become a more and more popular subject of study. One of the most important additional factors for possible candidates for this exploration of space is the planet's distance from the Sun, nicknamed the Goldilocks Zone. Just like porridge being just right, Mars is located within a specific distance from the Sun capable of sustaining life. And although space agencies and other fields of funded institutions staunchly deny the possibility of it once having been inhabited, possibly even by man himself, dismissing such ideas as preposterous, Mars's desolate red oxide landscape is in fact uncannily similar to Earth's possible future appearance if humans were to continue unsustainable activities or a cataclysmic event were to occur. Thus, is it so preposterous to ponder the possibility that the planet we see before us today was in fact transformed into its lifeless form by an event or possibly past insatiable appetites for its resources by an ancient civilization which once called it home. 
Could the Cambrian explosion, the sudden appearance of advanced life on our planet, be evidence of terraforming? Could there have also been a similar, yet now hidden, mammalian explosion? Indicating our own sudden arrival here on Earth, after it artificially became capable of sustaining us. An orchestrated introduction of a complex food chain by ancient man, who were in reality Martians. We have in the past covered some very strange occurrences on Mars. One in particular, suggesting that possible black operations to colonize the Red Planet are already underway. The Mars rovers were given an expected lifespan of just 90 days. This estimation was based upon the notorious dust storms which choke its surface. Yet Spirit lasted an incredible seven years, surviving until 2010, and Opportunity only recently ceased operation. This remarkable longevity, solely a result of what has become known as cleaning events, which for 14 years were repeatedly experienced and documented. Yet what is most curious regarding these events is that they always occurred while the rovers were offline. In July 2007, during the fourth mission extension, severe Martian dust storms blocked sunlight to the rovers and threatened the ability of the craft's survival. However, when the dust storms lifted and the rovers came back online, something had cleaned them of nearly all debris. On May 1, 2009, during its fifth mission extension, Spirit became stuck in the soft soils of Mars. Strangely, it seems, because the rover was not moving, it missed subsequent cleaning events. Did our mysterious helper assume it had died? Join us in our next video, which will be an expose of artifacts, features, ancient testimonies and satellite anomalies, and many other factors which support the conspiracy of secret Martian inhabitation supporting the hypothesis of an ancient Martian civilization that once called our red neighbor home. Evidential arguments we find highly compelling. In our last video, we discussed the possibility of there being a secret colony on Mars, a colony made possible by modern technologies, advances in sustainable agriculture and life-supporting artificial ecosystems, an apparent astronaut silhouette caught during one of the rover's unexplained cleaning events, and the resources such as water found upon the surface, making it an ideal candidate for such a mission. With running rivers, oceans, even possibly a thriving ecosystem, did we once call Mars home? If we did indeed once call Mars home, there would be undoubtedly ruins on its surface. Rare, surviving features that would still litter the landscape and, over the years, countless possible examples of these have been spotted. And although many of these could be dismissed as mere cases of pareidolia, others are just too perfect, too precise in their appearance to simply be dismissed. Possible ancient relics of a lost Martian civilization. Ancient sarcophagi, heads of statues, pyramidal structures discovered to match star constellations in their layout, most notably that of a Pleiades constellation, located near the famous face on Mars, an enormous face often argued as having been nothing more than a trickery of light, this regardless of ancient texts, linking the face, the pyramids, and the constellational alignment to the burial requests of a supposed ancient Anunnaki king. Phobos is yet another curious anomaly of Mars, known to be in a continually decaying orbit. There are many features of this satellite which baffle astronomers and researchers alike. For example, when one calculates its orbit, they are shocked to find that this orbiting rock should have crashed into the Martian landscape many, many years ago. What's more, satellite imagery of its surface has captured images of a very mysterious anomaly on a number of occasions. A cuboid monolithic object with no impact crater resting upon its surface. Buzz Aldrin has even mentioned this anomaly, specifically calling it a monolith, also noting that he believed, quote, God put it there. Is Phobos's enigmatic orbit deliberate? A past attempt to draw our attention to it, subsequently discovering this monolith? 
could it possibly hold undeniable proof of not only other life in the universe, but the past habitation of Mars itself? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Habitation on the moon. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track. If there's something very important to be developed from the moon, I'm not sure what it is right now. And I sure think we should identify what it is for America to make such gross expenditures again for human habitation on the moon. We can help. We can join with. Together, we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by to comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there? Many of the most astonishing feats of ancient engineering are often avoided by historians, with many historical research materials absent their existence, due to their unexplainable origins. The reason for this should be obvious, for when one gazes upon such relics, instantly struck with wonder. A curiosity as to how something of such incredible size or skill could have been created by the individuals these sites are often claimed as the work of. This is one of the main thesis of the channel, for not only are these sites largely ignored and thus overlooked regardless of being historically important structures, clear yet suppressed evidence that a civilization far more capable than any currently recorded within permitted timelines once flourished on Earth. Relics with a very different origin and indeed history. We believe that such structures were instead rediscovered by the many academically claimed builders, and this is often argued as being supported by empirical archaeological evidence. However, the archaeology merely proves inhabitation, not construction. With a record of construction never found within any of these academically claimed cultures' surviving records, merely having re-inhabited such structures for strategic motivations, and in doing so, left their own archaeological footprint, subsequently concealing an unknown aspect of human history, one which came to an abrupt end and one such site largely unknown by the greater world, is known as the Herodium. What makes this structure so incredible is not the small arrangement of stone structures within the center of the build, but the earthwork itself, the entire site's footprint and indeed, the volume of earth utilized in the making of this ancient earthwork was of gigantic proportions. A seemingly pyramid-sized volume of earth used in the building of what can only be described as a respectably sized hill made by the hands of ancient man. Once one inspects this site from the air, its huge size becomes apparent, and the incredible feat this once was, an undertaking, if in fact constructed with primitive tools, would have been a task of unimaginable hardship. Thousands of tons of earth were at some point quarried and then transported to this spot, subsequently creating an incredible well-sheltered inhabitation with an intimidating incline on all sides. Many similar earthworks can be found throughout the United Kingdom, with the biggest pyramid in Europe known as Silbury Hill mysteriously made completely of chalk. Yet this little mentioned site dwarfs Silbury Hill by some measure. The question is, how old is Herodium? Who made it? How did they accomplish such a feat? It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling.